Hi, it's Eric from Terraganics. I wanted to show you today how easy it is to make activated EM1. What you need is some EM1, you need molasses, and hot water. It's fine if it comes from the tap. There's no reason to worry about uh, tap water for making activated EM. All right. So what, we, what we're going to do is we're going to make a gallon. And what we need is three quarters a cup of molasses, three quarters a cup EM1, and then fill the container. And uh, I'll just measure out. So you get a nice big glop of molasses, roughly three quarters of a cup. And I'll pour this in. So you use hot water, it helps dissolve the molasses a bit. It takes a little more action than that. Um, And then over on these five gallon containers, have a nice quick serve tap. You just pour out the EM. All right, mix that in. Could use a spoon or your hand, doesn't matter. EM is pretty tough. Put that somewhere to clean it. All right, then pour in. The mixture. There. All right. Screw on the cap. Shake it a little bit, and then you'll leave this to ferment somewhere warm out of direct sunlight. It'll take about seven to 10 days. And the way that you know for sure that it's ready is you get some low range pH strips, dip the strip in there, hold it against the color chart, and it'll tell you what the pH is. You're looking for below 3.8 for your pH, and it should never go below three. Um, so once that pH is ready, you're ready to use this, and you can use it on your plants and your garden, um, you know, basically all the applications that we have on our website. So, um, one other thing. While it's fermenting, it'll start to produce some gas. Just simply unscrew the cap a little bit and release the pressure, and it'll be fine. Another thing you can do is use an airlock, which is uh, used in brewing, like brewing wine and beer. And it'll come in here and it'll have a little bubbler. So you just get a little rubber stopper, put it in there, and it'll just bubble away. And then once it's done, it's ready to use. So that's it. Okay, here's what it looks like when the container is activated. This is only a couple days in. This is how you gas off. Simply like that. Now watch, it'll start to bubble up. It's not too bad. And just seal it back up. Wait till it expands again. And then you're done. That's gassing off activated EM. So we're going to talk about doing the pH, where you're going to use pH strips because they're really easy and they're always accurate. As long as you're not colorblind, you can do this. All right, so you tear off a little bit of the strip, open up your activated EM, dip it in, and you hold it against the color chart. See where the color is? So this is what we would call 3.5 pH is dropped and it's ready to go. So now you can use your activated EM. That's it. All right, so we're gonna talk about troubleshooting. So if you have problems with your activation, usual causes are you don't have an airtight container, right? That's why I like a screw top container. It'll keep it airtight during the fermentation. Um, so if it's not airtight, you can get what's called jump-ins or a contamination, and that'll cause the pH to stay above four. Um, so make sure you got an airtight container, number one. Number two is the type of molasses you used. If you use sugar beet molasses, it's not gonna drop the pH, it'll actually spoil the product. Um, 
using organic molasses. A lot of people use organic molasses to activate. Organic molasses has some type of buffer in it that keeps the pH from dropping. So you can either double the amount of organic molasses that you use in making the product, or you can add in an equal amount of vinegar. Um, and then your fermentation, it sometimes takes a little bit longer, so you may give it 10 days to two weeks uh, with organic molasses. Uh, so that that's pretty much the the only things that we run into. The other one is uh, using a dirty container. Um, so like when I'm done activating this product and I'm done using this, you'd want to clean this container out completely. And um, if you got any crud like scum that builds up on the sides of it, you want to actually scrape that out and uh, use some bleach to kill anything that's in there and then you could redo and activate in this container. Otherwise, just get a new clean container. Um, and then containers that are good to use are anything with a screw top. Again, um, there's other things like water bottles, soda bottles, you know, anything. I recommend stuff that's plastic because this stuff will expand. Like if you see this, it'll, it'll expand and build pressure. In a glass container, the top could actually break off. Um, so I see people activating in mason jars and stuff like that. I don't recommend that because when you go to unscrew it, you can get yourself cut if the, if the glass cracks. Um, trying to think of anything else. There's usually not anything else. Um, but just, just make sure you have a clean container. You use conventional or double the amount of organic molasses or add in vinegar. And don't use sugar beet molasses. Um, now, where to get molasses, you can go to any any grocery store, get Barbados Blackstrap molasses. Those are really good, consistent, they work. Doesn't matter what it doesn't matter whether it's sulfured or unsulfured, uh, both work. Uh, you're mainly looking for the sugar source, but both molasses work. So I'd say troubleshooting, that's that's pretty much it. Watch for the pH below three point or right at three point five and you're you're good to go.